Plymouth, the waterfront city. This dynamic location is in the midst of an urban renaissance, with its current population of some 246,000 and a forward-thinking city council. The vision is to ensure Plymouth's position as one of Europe's most vibrant waterfront cities. With a real opportunity to revitalise youth and shape perceptions positively, Plymouth's plan is to entice thousands more visitors to the city. A small number of star projects will help assist the aspirations and deliver this using a unique framework. By 2020, there is an opportunity to target redevelopment and leads towards a brighter future. A tourism plan with specific goals and objectives has been set. Our company believe that we can help achieve this goal by the redevelopment of the Plymouth Ski Centre. There are many ski centres around the UK that offer ski and snowboard facilities. However, most of these are dry slopes. These are shown in red. There are only six real snow facilities within the UK. These are shown in green. The nearest real snow centre to Plymouth is 225 miles away in Milton Keynes. There is also a centre at a similar distance in Hemel Hempstead. The next closest is then Tamworth, which has a slope length of 170 metres. This highlights the lack of facilities within the entire southwest region. Plymouth University has over 30,000 students which participate in various social groups, the largest of which is the Snowriders group who have two trips abroad each year but currently have very limited facilities to train and compete in Plymouth. It can be seen that currently the only ice rink in the southwest is the Plymouth Pavilions. However, this is not Olympic sized which means it cannot be used for sports competitions. Plymouth have had an ice hockey team for 22 years but have never been able to play a competitive match due to the ice rink limitations. The proposed rink will provide facilities for all sports teams in addition to popular shows such as dancing on ice. The stadium style seating provides a capacity of over 3,000 spectators. Plymouth currently has one of the lowest participation in sports within the South West. By providing the opportunity for sports teams to compete it will encourage the community to partake in more fitness activities. Panacea are a civil and mechanical engineering design development firm based in Plymouth. Panacea was founded by a team of civil and mechanical engineers. This unique combination of specialist skills allows for innovative thinking which is integral to Panacea's mission statement and ethical values. Our core value provides an insight for future clients of Panacea's way of overcoming problems, both concerning matters within Panacea and with third parties. Above all else, our mission as a company is mediated by our core values. Let us introduce you to the team. Callum Berryman, Mechanical Systems Coordinator. Callum's professional development is primarily focused on aerospace component manufacturing. Elliot Parker, the Project Secretary. Elliot has worked on large-scale construction sites involving a number of redevelopments. Michaelis Adamu, the team's Geotechnical Coordinator. Michaelis is a flexible member of the team with a large number of disciplines. Sam Gardiner, the Senior Structural Engineering Coordinator. Sam has over seven years experience within engineering consultancies. Sam Bartle, the project leader, has over five years experience in infrastructure and highway design consulting. Tim Spence, the team's graphic media coordinator. Tim is an experienced structural engineer and has been involved with a wide number of projects within the industry. Alex Mott is the mechanical coordinator Alex's engineering background is based around hydraulic systems analysis. This plan view shows the existing surrounding area to our site, highlighted in red. The site is ripe for development, being situated extremely close to the A38 and to the River Plin. The existing site has lots of potential for development within its boundaries. Over the course of the design, we considered many possible formations and positions for the development, focusing on an efficient site with easy access that does not interfere with the surrounding residential estates. The final site plan used the local topography of the site to ensure the proposed design does not interfere with the surrounding views. Join us for a conceptual walkthrough of our site. Accordingly, a one-way system has been implemented on site with a new entrance formed on Barnstable Close. A ghost junction has been designed for this entrance point to provide a safe route for drivers while still allowing traffic flow onto the residential estate at the crest of the hill. To exit the site, the existing junction which adjoins Longbridge Road will be used with adequate signage to delineate the exit route for the user. The scheme will utilise the positioning of the current two car parks as the location for the ice rink, hence New car parking infrastructure has been designed. 
Due to the steep topography of the site, the car parking layout will be on four principal levels and staged to minimise groundworks with retaining structures utilised to achieve the change in elevations. In addition to this, two provisions of overflow have been considered. The first facility will be an on-site overflow situated in the western region of the scheme. In the scenario that this does not provide sufficient capacity, visitors will be directed to the park and ride at Koi Pool. Bus stops are also within close proximity to the facilities for visitors who wish to travel by public transport. Our first key destination on the walkthrough is the proposed hostel. This is aimed at providing cheap on-site accommodation, mainly targeted at visiting university students. Upon entrance is a modern reception area, including a fully interactive information kiosk. A fully functional bar and lounge provides a central community hub to the hostel. Activities such as pool and table tennis will be included, allowing integration between visiting universities. The hostel has approximately 60 rooms of varying sizes. Whilst the rooms are considered affordable, they still offer a very ergonomic and comfortable atmosphere, having been designed in full accordance with all applicable standards. The next key stop on our walkthrough is the Alpine themed hotel. The luxury three-storey hotel will provide the main accommodation on site with a capacity of over 100 rooms serving an excess of 200 people. The hotel will include disabled rooms at ground floor level as well as a standard single, double and family rooms at the first and second floor levels. The ground floor layout will incorporate all of the supplementary hotel facilities including dining, entertainment, laundry and storage. Office areas for admin will be provided behind the main reception desk with keypad entry for security. A lockable baggage storage area will be accessible via the main lobby next to the seating area. A large swimming pool will be positioned at the rear of the hotel with adjacent male and female changing rooms. These will also serve as a sauna and treatment room for spa therapy. The main restaurant will have seating capacity for 120 guests with an entertainment area positioned in the middle of the room, which can also be used as a dance floor for parties and private functions. This will be next to the bar and lounge area, which will have games facilities such as a pool table. The bar will be positioned within close proximity of toilets and away from all bedrooms. The first and second floors have identical room layouts, which include standard single and double rooms. All rooms will incorporate ensuite bathrooms with a toilet, basin and shower. Each room will include a double bed, full height wardrobe, drawer space and separate seating. Some rooms will also have access to a balcony area with stunning views over the Plin Valley. Premium double rooms and family rooms will also be available and will include two double beds, two full height wardrobes and additional drawers and cupboard space. These rooms will be served by a large ensuite bathroom with a toilet, basin, shower, bath and heated towel rail. All services will run within the service void in line with the main corridors at each level. The hotel will also utilise a grey water recycling system used to flush toilets. This will connect with the swimming pool overflow to automatically treat the water with chlorine. A primary new attraction to the site is the new ice rink stadium, which features a glazed entrance complete with a small cafe bistro and shop selling ice skating equipment and merchandise for the local ice hockey team. There will be space for local marketing sales and also a fully interactive information desk. Entering the main stadium through the tunnel and passing the equipment hire desk reveals the large open stadium style seating array. The circular surround seating provides approximately 3,000 seats over the minimum threshold to host international ice hockey events. Towards the northern flank wall of the stadium is access for the ice surfacing machine, which can be quickly deployed when required. The ice rink has the potential to have future use as a basketball court or to host stadium-based events due to an interchangeable floor. Towards the rear of the building is team changing rooms meeting the minimum standards of the Ice Hockey Federation and allowing the hosting of international ice hockey league games. There is also a bar for use in events. A number of shops will be available for customers within a segregated pedestrianised area. The indoor ski slope will be a focal point for the scheme. An adjoining hire centre will be used for sales, administration and a soft play area for visiting children. It will also accommodate space for a new franchise. To supplement the training options available, a state-of-the-art training centre will be used in operation and located behind the hire centre. The main ski slope will be split into three distinct levels to allow users of varying abilities to enjoy runs of different difficulty. 
A lower 15 degree pitch with adjoining 19 degree slope will be designated intermediate skiers and snowboarders, whereas the upper level will have a steeper 21 degree slope for more advanced users to navigate. The full slope length will be approximately 150 meters with a width of 60 meters. At the bottom of the beginner slope, a large 50 meter squared recreational area will exist for the younger generation of people to visit the site and enjoy, even if they cannot ski. Across this section of the slope, there will be an area for children to play in, which will include things such as igloos and snowmen. As stated in the specification of facilities, attached to the Plymouth Alpine Ski Centre will be a fine dining, a la carte French bistro reflecting the French Alps cuisine. The restaurant will have the capacity to seat approximately 120 covers. To enhance restaurant ambience, the front elevation will consist of full height glazing. This will not only allow and assist with the illumination of the restaurant, but will also allow the diner to experience the beauty of the Plym Valley and picturesque landscape from an outstanding viewpoint. Plymouth 2020 is an important local government strategy which Panacea aims to progress with the redevelopment of Plymouth Ski and Snowboard Centre. Plymouth has many assets and positive factors which can be built upon. These assets, coupled with growing education infrastructure, provide a platform for which the city can evolve. At present, this plan already includes a holistic corporate approach to a long-term strategy for the regeneration and transformation of the city, with areas of redevelopment already including the opening of a boulevard between the western end of the shopping centre in Mill Bay, the proposed transformation of the Brettonside bus station into a £42 million leisure facility, and a new innovation centre in the heart of the shopping centre in Taylor Maxwell House. Plymouth Alpine Ski Centre looks to utilise the nearby industrial estate to place solar panels on their roof space, in a deal that will see both parties saving vast sums. The total costs are expected to be £3.8 million. The hostel roof will have solar thermal panelling in order to reduce expenditure on gas heating and further panacea's goals of a carbon neutral site. Integrated with the panelling will be a ground source heat pump system to further bring down these energy costs. Government incentives offer 18.8p per kilowatt hour generated by these means. A rainwater capture system will fulfill the site's large water requirements in both the indoor ski centre and ice rink. This will be collected in large 90,000 litre tanks. Panacea's strengths are primarily in its interdisciplinary design team, that are both enthusiastic yet considerate within their design, and with a diverse history of previous projects. The project weaknesses are mainly in the disruption of existing site users and the potential community opposition to the proposed development. The opportunities presented to Panacea and for the project are the potential further expansion into an emerging sector, and it will also provide strong links with the local university. The threats faced are the existing sports facilities throughout Plymouth and other competitive engineering companies with a deeper background and financial strength. Within Panacea, we always aim to deliver outstanding professional services that are both innovative and sustainable. A financial breakdown model has been developed to predict when and where bank loans and project funding will be incorporated. The main costs included in the project is the ice rink at 2.5 million, the indoor ski slope at 25.4 million, and the hotel at 5.3 million. The total renewable investment is 4.5 million, with an additional 13.3 million on additional works. Including other amenities as well as loans interest, the project carries a total cost of 51 million pounds. The project's main income will be generated by the hotel, ice rink and ski slope. The hotel is estimated to achieve £1.8 million per annum, the ice rink at £3.8 million per annum and the ski slope at £5.1 million per annum. This represents a profitability of £71,000 per month and £443,000 per month after full loan repayment. We believe that the redevelopment of the Plymouth Ski Centre is a highly profitable venture and will prove fundamental to Plymouth's 2020 vision. We hope you share our enthusiasm and belief in making this project a reality. On behalf of Panacea, we thank you for your time.